Well, this video is about some good information you guys should know about fixing small engines. It'll just save you a bunch of little hassles, and I'll show you some tricks. First off, getting off your lawnmower blade. Sometimes the nut is really tight. Well, most of the bolts have a 9 16th head, but that's not important. The first trick is, if it doesn't want to come off easy before you strip the corners off, is beat it hard lots of times with a hammer. Then try again. The second trick is, instead of using a 9 16 socket, use a 14 millimeter socket. It is slightly smaller and will grip a little bit better. Good luck. Next is the compression. Well, all you do is screw one of these testers into the spark plug hole and check the compression. You check the compression with the throttle at full speed for all engines. And you pull it as fast as you can. And you see what it is. The, the compression should be between 75 and 80 pounds minimum pressure per square inch. If it's any lower than that, give up trying to start your machine because it won't start. Good compression on a lawnmower should be over 100 PSI. Well, next is governors to make your motor go faster or slower. Well, this is called the governor flapper vane. It's on Briggs and Stratton engines. And it's connected to a governor spring. This one's a little bit screwed up. But the spring gets lazy as years go by and stretches a little bit. So if you cut out a few little loops, like three or four or five, bend a new hook on it, hook it back up, it'll make your lawnmower run at the speed it was when it's brand new. But if you want to get a little crazy, the more you shorten the spring, the tighter it becomes. Then you can run your lawnmower all the way to the speed where it'll blow the motor. On two-stroke engines like this Lawn Boy, a good trick is always check how dry the crankshaft is before you start working on them. If it's wet and juicy, or you can shake and wobble a little bit and it moves around in there, chances are the bottom main bearings are bad. And the seal's bad. And when the seal's bad on a two-stroke engine, the motor does not want to run, or will barely run and have no power. And of course, the next thing you always check on two-strokes is, are these ports free and clear like this engine is, or clogged up with carbon? If they're clogged up with carbon, just dig it out with a screwdriver, but don't scratch the piston. Now, most people that regularly work on small engines have had the syndrome of ripped finger syndrome. <laughs> you go to start a four-stroke Tecumseh especially, more so than Briggs's, and someone's broke the flywheel key a little bit. That's from hitting something with your blade that you weren't supposed to hit. When you remove the starter cup, you look down that slot and you can see the key. Well, even if that key's only a little bit broken, but usually not, it's usually moved right over and the slots don't line up, that'll cause the thing to spark at the wrong timing. It'll throw off where the magneto is synchronized to top dead center on the piston, for when it's supposed to fire the spark and it'll fire it too soon and that kicks the piston down backwards and of course when that happens it rips the pull cord right out of your fingers and it hurts like hell. The best way to get the flywheels off because they're on pretty tight is take your handy dandy pry bar, stick it someplace underneath, pry upwards, put your foot on the whole lawnmower base to hold everything down and then my favorite tool is one of these handy dandy air impact tools. It's just like a chisel. When you're prying up hard, stick the little point in the little hole, squeeze the trigger, and brrr, in like one second the flywheel just jumps off. Simple as that. If you don't have one of those $22 tools, you screw the nut back on just so it's sticking above the threads just a little bit. And while you're prying hard, Give it a good whack with a big hammer. The reason the nut's on there so it protects the threads. To get the flywheel off Briggs and Stratton motors is more difficult for some people, but it really isn't. They just don't have an ordinary nut like these engines do. They have this ratchet thing. Well, this ratchet thing screws on. This one's already loose. But there's two ways to get them off, and they're both very simple. First is, if you have one of these homemade or purchased handy-dandy removal tools. I have some wheel nuts welded on here and that gives me two gaps and the gaps fit over those bumps so when I set this thing on here it grips those bumps and then I just stick my air impact tool in there and spins it right off in like a wink of an eye. 
Well, if you don't happen to have one of those wonderful tools, it's still really simple. Get an open end wrench, hook it on the bump like that, and hit the other end of your wrench with a hammer. These things are always right hand thread, so they just spin off counterclockwise. You can even use a piece of pipe. Just put a piece of pipe or a steel bar on one of those bumps and beat the end with a hammer. It spins these things right off. Now the trick is when you put them back on, always lubricate that little shaft. It may need sanded if it looks kind of scorched and burnt. And it may need oiled. And don't use motor oil. The best kind of oil to use to lubricate those shafts is automatic transmission oil or very light sewing machine oil or something like that. If your Vision Stratton is running fine, but then all of a sudden while it's running for just a short period of time, it makes a big screeching sound and then stops dead and looks like it's going to pull the pull cord right back inside the motor. That means that the shaft hasn't been sanded and oiled. And then it gets a lot of friction and gets hot in there. And it seizes up for a second just after it's done screeching. And you end up with this problem. To fix that problem, you don't even have to remove the ratchet. You just remove the top cap by prying on it with a little screwdriver. And you'll see the bearings in there. You just pull this thing off. Maybe stick some sandpaper down there, sand it out a little. Sand the shaft like I just said. And there's actually a felt pad in the hole in the end that absorbs the oil we were just talking about. It doesn't matter if any oil gets in here, that's not important. What is important is this whole area is very clean and dry, but no grease ever on here. Those ball bearings are your ratchets that catch on those bumps. If you do have to end up replacing the flywheel key that's in there, like you can see over there, never use a steel key. Use an aluminum one like the ones that came out. If you use a steel key, yeah, technically it works fine, but if you hit something again, it will damage the slot in your steel crankshaft, and that's not good. And secondly, it will very often split your flywheel right in half, and that's bad. It's very important to put these things back on tight and pound them on with the hammer, or use your handy dandy tool. If they're not on very tight, as soon as you go to start your lawnmower up, and use it just a little bit, or just even while you're pulling it and starting it, the key breaks all by itself from the kick from the motor and the piston. And something that a lot of people just don't know is that lawnmowers have an aluminum flywheel and universal purpose small engines have a cast iron flywheel. Well the reason why lawnmowers have an aluminum flywheel is the blade is actually the real flywheel. It's the thing that gives it enough momentum to keep turning around. So if you're trying to start your engine without a blade on it, it'll also kick back just like the flywheel's key is broke and it'll just keep like, like popping, sputtering, and stalling. It's very difficult to get them to run properly. They almost for sure won't idle and you're definitely going to hurt your fingers a lot of time. So always make sure your blade is on tight before you try to start your lawnmower engine. You see this is a flywheel from a universal purpose engine like ones on a snowblower or a pump or a generator and they're cast iron so they have enough momentum and mass to them because they're running without a blade that they work just fine with this flywheel. The other depressing thing about these engines with their aluminum flywheels is if you want to use them on some sort of motorized device like a bike or whatever you want to build they just don't work right because they don't have that flywheel and just a little clutch or pulley you install on them isn't enough to make them work properly or start easy. Now some more info about these magnetos. They come in two types. Electronic ignition, like this one. You can identify them as they have this little plastic bump that sticks off to one side. The older models just have the round part where the coil is. If you want to test if this is good or bad, there's a kill wire on it. There's a little connector, a spade connector. You just unplug the wire going to it and hook a spark plug on the end of your spark plug wire. Ground the other end of your spark plug and pull it fast and it makes spark. If that kill wire is disconnected, it turns this thing on. So sometimes the system isn't working because the braking system kill is shorted out or the kill wire is rubbed a hole through or someplace else and the off and on system is defective. So that's your one way you'll always know if this is good or not. You can't interchange these. Except you can put the newer ones on the old engines. So if you have a spare electronic ignition coil and you have an older engine that you don't want to fix the points of condenser on, 
just snip the wires going to it. Forget it even exists underneath the flywheel. These things just fit right on perfectly. And that's it. Just hook the kill wire to it. And you converted your pre-1982 engine to the newer style. Uh, it's very dependable. Another good piece of info is knowing what a shorted spark plug is. This particular spark plug would not let the machine start up. I just changed it. The shortest spark plug is black and juicy on the middle of the electrode. Almost always they won't work. When you pull them out of the engine and check for spark, yes, there will be spark. When you put them back in the engine and it has compression when you're trying to start it, the spark would rather jump down the gooey electrode than jump the gap and you have no spark and that's why they don't work. If you have a Briggs & Stratton engine that seems to always run perfectly at full throttle, and you've got the carburetor adjusted right and the choke isn't sticking on or anything, check the intake manifold tube. That's the tube that goes to the carburetor, runs underneath the made needle, and attaches by these two screws. If it wobbles the slightest bit, that means these screws are loose and the little gasket that's under here is damaged. So when you're idling, it's sucking too much air in there to give it the right mixture so it doesn't want to idle or it misfires a lot. So you can make a gasket, just replace the gasket, it's so easy, just two screws. So, there was your good tips for the day. You may have not even learned all of those in your whole life fixing mowers and small engines, but now you know them, so things aren't going to be so tough anymore. Things will be just fine.